to my channel. Today I have kind of jumped on the bandwagon and done a how to do your makeup, how not to do your makeup, or maybe it's how to and how to not do your makeup. Whatever. I watched a lot of these on YouTube and I wanted to make mine a little bit different. Basically, I didn't want to be like mocking people that do their makeup a certain way or telling you that the way you do your makeup is wrong, you shouldn't do it like that, uh, I don't like it because goodness knows I get enough of that on my own YouTube channel and I'm a makeup artist and it's just a little bit demoralizing. So I wanted to make it clear that however you like to do your makeup, that is the right way to do it. If that makes you feel good and you feel comfortable like that and you feel like it brings out your best features, keep doing it like that because it's your face. At the end of the day, you choose how you want to make it look. I need to slow down my talking. What I did want to focus on was more the technique of how to do things. But in my opinion, these techniques might work a little bit better for you guys and give you a better result and at the end of the day, be more flattering for faces. So I hope that you all enjoy this and that I don't insult anybody by accident. <laughs> so keep on watching if you want to see, in my opinion, how to and how to not do your makeup. Okay, so what I'm going to do first of all is put my moisturizer all over my face. Okay, so I am going to apply moisturizer to my face. So what you want to do is apply your moisturizer very, very gently onto your skin and give it as long as you can to actually soak into your skin before you move on to your next step. So I'm going to give mine two minutes to soak in after I've applied it and that way I know it's not going to be sitting on the surface of my skin when I go in and put my foundation on. If your moisturizer is just sitting there on the surface of your skin when you go to put your foundation on, your foundation will just slide off and it's not going to adhere to your skin properly. I'm using a very lightweight moisturizer. If you want to know what it is, check out my blog. As you can see, I'm just placing it on my skin and then I'm going to very, very gently rub it into my skin. Very gently. I'm not going to give it any time to soak in because who has time for that? I'm just going to go straight ahead and put my primer on all over my face. I'm using this one here. It's a green primer because I have a very red face, as you can see. About that much. soaking either, I'm going to straight away apply my foundation because I like to layer it up. So I'm actually going to skip primer. Ooh. I know everyone seems to love primer and they swear by primer, blah blah blah. I've tried that many different primers and none of them work well with my skin. I've got really big pores on my nose and a lot of primers I've tried either I just illuminate them and they kind of sit there and are like, eee, I'm a pore. And I've also tried mattifying ones where they're really silicon based and my foundation just slides off the moment I put it on. So. All I do is moisturize my skin and then I go straight in with my foundation after a few minutes. I'm going to use one that's not at all suited to my skin type just because I've read about it in blogs and everyone seems to love it. And I'm not going to apply it with a brush or a sponge. I'm going to apply it with my hands like this and I'm going to rub it all over my face. And then any bits that look a little bit patchy, I'm just going to rub them in as well. And I'm going to press quite hard when I do this because I feel like that's going to blend it out better. As you just saw in the what not to do, I basically rubbed my foundation into my face with my hands. I'm not saying that you can't use hands, obviously you can, and I actually used to use fingers to do my foundation when I was younger, and it was fine, but what you definitely don't want to do, and this is with a brush, this is with a sponge, this is with your fingers, you never ever want to rub your foundation into your skin. When you do that, hopefully you could see in the what not to do, basically you're removing it as you apply it, so it's really patchy, you don't get an even coverage, and you also cause hyperexfoliation, and especially if you have dry or dehydrated skin, you're going to notice this, because what it does, it makes those little flaky bits of skin stand up, and then your foundation will cling to them, and it's just a big mess. So, how I'm going to apply this one is with the sponge, and I'm going to dab it onto my face. It's called stippling, you can do stippling with your fingers, I would say just use these two fingers here and just pat it onto your face. You can also use a brush, it's a little bit harder with a brush, but it's possible, so work around and find which way you find it easiest to apply your foundation, but make sure to never rub it into your skin. I 
I like my skin to be dewy, so I'm not going to apply any powder. I'm just going to go straight in and apply the rest of my makeup. If you do like the dewy look, that's all well and good, but please, 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 if you're using a foundation that does not set dry on its own, please set your foundation in place with powder. What that's going to do is it's going to prevent your foundation from melting off throughout the day. It's going to give you a little bit of extra coverage if you're using a powder that has a bit of coverage. The basic rule in makeup is if you're using a cream or liquid foundation, you must always set it in place with a fine dusting of powder. A nice powder to use if you do like that dewy look is the Chanel Vita Lumiere. What is it? Chanel Vita Lumiere Compact Deucer. It's very, very fine, so you can't see it on the skin, and it's not a matte finish, it's more like a radiant, um, satiny finish. Personally, what I'm going to use is the Australis Fresh and Flawless Powder. Yes, this one is a matte powder, but if you like that dewy look, all you need to do is just simply powder your T-zone. So it's better that than nothing. Do not rub your powder in with your brush or your sponge. Simply press it gently into the skin. Next I'm going to apply my blush. This one is an orangey peach colour. It's called Cantaloupe from MAC. I'm just going to put that all over my cheeks. And I'm going to rub it into my skin as well. See this line here too? I'm going to go past that because the more blush the better. I really want to buff that into my skin as well. I'm putting it really low down on the cheeks as well. Just like that. Okay, first things first, I don't know if you can tell from my chest here, but my skin has a definite cool undertone. I'm a very, very pink person and quite pale. The blush that I just used was this one here, that cantaloupe peachy... <gasps> it's okay, it didn't die. So anyway, I just used this one here. It was the peachy orange colour from MAC. This is the wrong colour for my skin tone. It will just wash me out completely. Look at that and that... Ugh. What I should be using to go with my skin tone, and I probably will do a separate tutorial on how to pick the right shades for your skin tone, blah blah blah. I'm going to use this one here. As you can tell, it's definitely got a pink undertone to it. It is a pale pink blush. This one is... Oh no, I can't find the name. Oh, that's it right there. It's Down Boy and it's from The Balm. I haven't tried this one yet, only got it yesterday, so this will be exciting. So one thing I did do right just before was use the right brush. This is a blush brush. This one is from Hair and Makeup Addiction and it is my favourite blush brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a very, very, very small amount of this at a time. You can always build blush up if you feel like you don't have enough on, but if you go in too heavy like I just did, it's on your face and that's where it stays. Because I've already got powder on my face, it's not going to cling to my skin and I'm going to be able to blend it out really quickly and easily. I'm applying it from the apples of the cheeks and blending it up and away to nothing. And as you might have just seen in the what not to do, I went way past the smile line. This here into here and that just makes it look like you've got some kind of rash. So I'm also going to dab it into my skin. So do not rub your blush into your skin. In fact, don't rub anything into your skin. Next I'm going to do my contouring. I'm using this one here. It's from MAC. I can't remember the name, but as you can see, it's a really dark orangey brown bronzer. I'm going to be applying that underneath my cheekbones. You just want to move like this in up and down strokes. So you're buffing this into your skin as well. Underneath the cheekbone there, so you create a hollow in your cheeks. and you've got a pink undertone like I do, do not use bronzer underneath your cheekbones to contour. Use bronzer anywhere else, use it where the sun hits naturally, like your forehead, nose, tip of the chin, as long as it's not got shimmer or sparkle in it. If you have an olive skin tone or a warm skin tone or you've got a yellow undertone, then you can absolutely use bronzer wherever you want to, but for other people, try and steer clear of that. What I like to use because of my undertone is this one here, it is Strata by MAC. This one has been discontinued, but Harmony from MAC is pretty much identical, so use that instead. I'm going to apply this underneath my cheekbones very sparingly using an angled contour brush. And same thing with the blush, apply a very small amount and build it up if you need to. As you can see, I'm not going to go up and down in stripes like this. Do not do that because you're just going to rub your foundation away. What you want to do is gently dab it onto your skin in little powdery puffy movements. And don't try and create a hollow in the cheeks. Like, don't make this area appear really sunken because then you just look a little bit unhealthy and drawn. So just apply it directly underneath your cheekbone and blend it into your blush. 
like that. Now I need to balance my face out, so I've contoured my cheekbones, I want to contour the rest of my face, and for that, yes, I am using a bronzer. I am using this one here, it is much lighter than the one I just used, which was this one here, so that is quite a difference. I'm going to apply this anywhere the sun hits naturally, i.e. top of the forehead, bridge of the nose, tip of the chin, just to warm up my complexion a little bit and make me look a little bit healthier. my brows as you can see they're really thin so I'm just going to use the shape that they already are and I'm just going to draw over that basically just to make them darker I've got a little bit of primer caked up in my eyebrows but that's fine I'm not going to brush through them or anything like that I'm just going to go straight in with my pencil like that Okay, yes, my brows are thin. No, I don't want them to stay that way. Thin brows are very aging, they can make you look very drawn, and it's just not a very good look, in my opinion. Brows, obviously, are very personal, and they also depend on your face shape, etc, etc. If you like thin brows, absolutely stick with your thin brows. Just try and fill them in a little bit more naturally, and make sure the inside corner is a little bit lighter, and that the outer tail is darker. So you don't want it to be the same color all over, because then it's quite obvious that you've drawn it in, because brows naturally are quite sparse on the inner corner. Personally, my natural eyebrows were quite thick before I plucked them and ruined them to this. So I like to fill them in quite thick just to balance out the rest of my features because I do have large-ish features. So what I'm going to do first of all is brush my brow hairs up very gently so I don't ruin my foundation. And I'm going to very gently feather my brows in. So I'm not drawing one straight line, I'm gradually going to build it up. some lipstick and I'm just going to go straight in with my lipstick and apply it all over my lips. Oh yeah. Okay, I know your nude lips are kind of all the rage, but they're also very, very hard to wear and very difficult to pull off if you go too light. The one I was just wearing was way too light. It looked like I had no lips and that, for me, is not a flattering look whatsoever. What I would suggest to do rather than go for the nude lip look, especially if you are going for darker eyes, is to go for the neutral lip look. So there's a difference between nude and neutral. Personally, I think that neutral is a lot more flattering than nude because nude can definitely wash you out if it's not done so correctly and it's very, very difficult to find the right nude to suit your skin tone. What I would suggest is a neutral lip. This is going to look great with any makeup that you do, even if you do want to go for really dark eye makeup. It's going to be so flattering on everybody. And this again, you're going to want to match to your skin tone. I'm going to go for this lip liner here. This one is called Natural Blush. It's from Elf Cosmetics, so very cheap. And I would always recommend to use a lip liner. I swear by lip liners. Sometimes all I wear is a lip liner with a bit of lip balm or gloss on top just to give hydration. If you go straight in with your lipstick on its own, you're not going to get much wear out of it. You're going to be topping up all throughout the day because it's just going to wear off like it was a lip balm. You're also not going to get the precision and the neat line that you want. So I would recommend colouring your lips in first with a matching lip liner and then going in with the lipstick of your choice. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is apply my lipstick on top of this. So the lipstick I'm using is Rimmel's Vintage Pink. So what I would recommend to do is apply your lipstick with a lip brush. So this is going to last a whole lot longer than just applying lipstick on its own. If you haven't tried it before, colour your lips in with lip liner and then tell me if it lasted longer. Now I'm going to apply some eyeshadow. I'm using this one here. It's called Print from MAC. I'm going to apply it with a flat eyeshadow brush. And then I'm going to blend it with the same brush. And as you can see, it's a little bit harsh on the outer edge, so I'm just going to blend that a little bit more. This is something I see all the time, and it's not really people's fault. The fact of the matter is a lot of palettes that people buy, they come with these flat, shitty brushes. And there's really nothing you can do with those brushes but pack on eyeshadow. You cannot blend with them. I hate them. What I would highly, highly, highly recommend you doing is investing in a blending brush. Yeah, a blending brush. My most favourite one, as you might already know, is this one here. It is from Bedellium Tools and it is a 787. It's a duo fibre blending brush. This little baby here will do all the work for you. So you don't have to spend hours trying to blend your eyeshadow out. This guy does it. Shh. 
you don't have a lot of eyeshadows or you're a little bit confused about which eyeshadow is going to suit your eye color and your skin tone, etc., I would say the safe bet is to go for something like this. It is just a medium to light brown, and this one is called Satin Talk. It's from MAC. I've got a lot of browns in my collection. Another one I really like is this one here. This is called Wheat from Bobbi Brown. These colors suit everybody, every skin type, every skin color, every eye color. So you really can't go wrong with a brown. So like I just did in the what not to do, I'm just gonna apply one color, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like blended out and what a difference it makes. Alright, so that's it on the mobile lid. By the way, the mobile lid, you know when you blink, that's the part that moves up and down. Ugh. Anything above the mobile lid is your socket line or your crease. What you want to do is apply the bulk of colour to the mobile lid, like what I did in the what not to do section, but then you want to blend it up and away to nothing throughout the socket line crease. I'm going to balance that out by applying a tiny little bit of the same colour underneath my lower lash line. Next I'm going to apply my eyeliner. I'm going to apply that to the top and bottom, but I'm going to apply it on the outer rims of my eyes, so not the inner rims. Like that. And as you can see I've brought it all the way in as well, so I'm going to repeat that on the top lid too. And I'm going to wing it out just a little bit on the outer corners of my eyes. Okay, so applying your eyeliner like that, on some people it can look amazing. Usually if you've got brown eyes, that will look alright. I would say it's far better, however, to, instead of drawing over the top of your lashes and bottom lashes, is to run your eyeliner through the lash line. So run this against the root of your lashes, and then take a tiny detailer brush or your finger and smudge it out so it's really soft. I would recommend to not apply it, actually, to the bottom lid because it kind of drags everything down. Um, it looks quite aging in my opinion, but if it looks good on you, keep doing it because it's your eyes and you know it looks good. You can take a little brush for this or you can just use your finger. I'm just going to use my finger and I'm just going to smudge that line out so it's really soft and smoky. I personally would leave it here and I think for daytime makeup on most people this looks much better than applying eyeliner to their bottom rim as well but for the sake of showing you how to apply it if you really do want to wear eyeliner on the bottom lash line as well I would say put it on the inner rim rather than underneath the lower lash line because that's when you start looking really droopy eyed. Next I'm going to apply some mascara. I'm just going to apply it and wherever it falls is where it falls. I'm also not zigzagging my brush, I'm just basically going like this. Okay, so if you go to wear mascara, make an effort to do it properly. Don't just run it along the tips of your lashes, just moving in an upwards direction. Put a little effort into it and it will really pay off. Yes, I do have a tutorial just on how I apply my mascara, so I will have that in the description. <laughs> description box down below for you if you want to check that out otherwise I'll skim through it here as well basically what you want to do is start from the roots of the lashes wiggle your brush and drag it upwards now what you want to do is go from behind the lashes right so I've got my mascara on and this is how I have done it So I hope that you enjoyed that video. I so hope that I didn't insult anybody by accident or like come across that I was mocking people because that is not what I was going for. I saw on other videos like this that people were getting really offended and I definitely don't want to offend anybody. So it's not so much you can't do this, you can't do that because it looks shit. Just do whatever you want to do but maybe change the technique in which you apply things. That's what I wanted to say. Like I mentioned at the start, if you missed anything or I spoke too fast or you didn't catch anything, check out the blog post. I will have the link in the description box down below. And there I will have step-by-step -step instructions of everything I used, um, all products and 
what I did and what not to do. So check that out. I do have Instagram, Tumblr, Twitter, and Pinterest. The links to all of those will be in the description box down below as well. I use Instagram every day, so come chat to me on there if you want to. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I love you all so much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Dog. Ow! He's got really long claws. I have to take him to get them chopped. Ow! For crying out loud. Oh yes, you do a little mama. Yes, I should mention. Mm. I just put a little bit of this on my cheekbones. Didn't mention that in the video. Or I am because this is still the video. Oh.